Good afternoon. I want to thank everybody who joins us. Ukraine Media Center Ukraine Forum continues its operation. It's day 328 of our fight for freedom. And the topic of our today's briefing is the cyber security and prevention of cyber attacks. But right before this briefing, we're, we've just faced a cyber attack on our information platform committed by Russia. We understand they don't like to hear the truth about this war, but we're not to be stopped. We are online, we're broadcasting. And I want to introduce our next speaker. It's Yuri Shikol, the head of state service for special communications, communications and information security. So, Mr. Yuri, let's start with this event that just happened. Good afternoon, dear colleagues, dear journalists. With this event, everything the Russian hackers managed to do was to postpone our briefing just 15 minutes. So, in fact, they're just postponing the end of their country. And I think it will happen really shortly. So, let's proceed to cyber attacks. The threat of cyber attacks from the Russian Federation, it did not disappear. Their number is growing. And starting from 14th of January, just three days ago, we in fact have the anniversary of the first world cyber war. It's not only our opinion, but it's the opinion of our international partners, because the number of cyber attacks suffered by Ukraine and all the civilized world that supports Ukraine, there was no equivalent number in history. Just for the last year, we were able to identify and document seven new types of uh, virus viruses in Viber. And within year 2022, uh, 22, yeah, it was only three of them. So the number of uh, software, uh, malicious software only increases. So all all of those are the types of cyber warfare used by Russia and the recent research performed by our specialist along with the civil specialist just confirmed the, the, that opinion that they coordinate their cyber attacks with the rocket strikes and information, stri information operations, so-called. The main system that provides the security of the government agencies and of the state in general is the system of a secure access to internet. Now more than 200 government agencies use this type of system and on a daily basis it blocks thousands of malicious attacks and thousands of DDoS attacks. Talking in absolute numbers, we repel five to seven attacks of a, of a powerful level and within January, uh, more than 390, 395 powerful DDoS attacks were prevented from 5 to 40 daily. We cooperate with the private sector and it's one of the fundamentals of the res resilience of our system. And even the experts, uh, the government agencies in Great Britain, United States and France, as we could recently see, they are surprised by the resilience of our country in terms of information security. Within last year, the government team for reaction, CERT-UA, uh, they, uh, uh, they research every every single cyber attacks. It was about six cyber attacks per day. It's the biggest work uh, of our team. Uh, the, the sectors most which suffer mostly are the civil spheres, logistics, uh, power grid, uh, and the, the, just like they at attack with their missiles, our critical infrastructure, they attack uh, our in critical infrastructure with their cyber warfare as well. 557 cyber attacks were committed against government agencies and you can see the rest of the statistics on the slides. So uh, their main purpose is the acquisition of details about logistics, the personal information about the government officials and regular civilians is the destruction of critical infrastructure and information and psychological warfare. The most, the most popular 
mean is the dissemination of a malicious warfare using just a regular emails so we call everybody to take it responsibly to take their cyber hygiene responsibly so it's the work of every single person because all of you each and every one of you is the element which is responsible for the overall secur security of the cyber sector it's mostly related to the uh, government employees but even the regular civilians as well another most popular method of cyber attacks is the uh, identification of vulnerabilities in the software uh, which is being studied very thoroughly by them the result of our work the the results that we achieved this year are the three components which were not effective previously we managed to do it all thanks to the reform that we uh, undertook with the support of the Ministry of Digital Transformation. Never before, in fact, the government agencies did not work uh, so well coordinated as before. Cyber Police, Security Service of Ukraine, and it's not a big secret that we communicate 24-7, that we coordinate our actions 24-7, we communicate on the top level, our experts exchange the information several times a day, and it is something that was not happening ever before. We work with, with the best private experts and Ukrainian companies, we build the system of, of uh, trust. So uh, again, it's not a, a big secret. If I say that six of the best cyber experts are are enlisted in the government agencies, the the, the services, so ninety percent ninety percent of the best experts they work for the government today, and international support, both political uh, and on the level of a big private business helps us to acquire the access to all the powerful instruments such as Amazon, Microsoft, uh, and uh, unlike before, when, it, 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 when there were many bureaucratic obstacles, now any request for access to their technologies takes only one day, and the bigger problem is the difference in time zones rather than any bureaucratic obstacles. We have all this support on international levels, all the organizations of NATO countries, Great Britain. We have uh, full, full cooperation and teamwork in this area. Another aspect that was demonstrated by the war is how important for us is the communication. Uh, the, the, when it's up, and running, everything thinks that everything is normal and this is how things should be. But when the communication disappears, we understand, we realize that we cannot just get in touch with our closed ones, with our relatives, and we cannot get 90% of information from our gadgets, from our telephones as of today. For example, the accessibility to the cellular network is 77% in Ukraine. The level of renewal in the temporarily occupied territories of uh, Kherson region are about 20%. So it's the issue of uh, electric power supply and the operation of the base stations. So when the occupiers, they leave the occupied areas of the of Ukraine, they destroy the base stations, they destroy optic fiber cables. So in the south of the country, we build internet from scratch. We bring the equipment, the uh, carriers, they lay the uh, fiber, fiberglass networks and uh, install the base stations. So the communication, uh, the situation with the communication is most difficult in the temporarily occupied regions of Lugansk, Donetsk and Zaporizhia region. There are also difficulties in Odessa and Cherkasy regions, mostly due to the absence of power, of uh, regular power supply, but to provide uh, the citizens with the most basic services such as communication supply and electric power supply, the, the government identified uh, specific spots such, a, such as uh, uh, critical infrastructure facilities and resi resilience stations which should have 
reserve power sources for at least three days and we should be able to provide the communication services. So this resolution is already 75% fulfilled. And I think we will just need to bring more powerful generators. We will have to maintain them, to fuel them. The carriers work on that and uh, they invest not some stellar funds in that. And I think that within a couple of months we will reach 100% coverage. Today we need to increase the power, the electric power independence and to uh, ensure the operation of the base stations in Ukraine. The operators, the, the carriers installed, the Kyiv Star only installed 12,000 batteries with increased capacity. Vodafone in, installed about 10,000. The carriers work 24 7, so you could have normal communication. Thanks to our international partners, we received the necessary equipment that is being handed directly to the carriers, which is being handed to government agencies. I'm talking about SpaceX the, and the, the work of our vice prime minister who works, who communicates directly with Elon Musk. So we are currently the country which has the largest number of Starlinks. Uh, sec second only to the United States. It gives us advantage both in the battlefield and to maintain communication in the uh, in critical infrastructure facilities. Also on the diplomatic level, we have to achieve the recognition of Russian Federation, a criminal state, for, for example, the International Unit for Electric Communication, which is a bureaucratic organization and to, which for, for which it takes a lot of difficulties to, to take a resolution. They pub publicize the impartial report on the dis level, scale of destruction in Ukraine. Russians had very powerful influence in that organization, it ch but a lot of things changed after the last elections where Russians did not make it to any of the executive bodies of the organization. So it was a, the result of a powerful work of our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And we, uh, it, it was their merit that Russians were not elected to any management office, any management position. So it's the first official report which documents the losses, in fact. The total amount of such losses is $1.79 billion in the sector of telecommunications. It's the TV towers, it includes basic stations and uh, fiber cables that we, fiberglass cables that we will have to reconstruct after we get reparations from our, our unfriendly neighbor. Thanks everybody for attention. So my question is maybe something that everybody, all the Ukrainians expect for you mentioned that our uh, cell network carriers uh, use the generators with increased capacities. So how sufficient these capacities would be if such necessity arises, if God forbid black, blackout happens again, they will be sufficient until the very moment of our victory. For today, the carriers uh, procured and installed more than 1,000 generators and they ordered three to 4,000 more. The biggest problem is that they're not somewhere in this warehouse in the world, but they're being manufactured. So all the international donors and the politicians, they're looking everywhere all around the world. There is a problem with manufacturing, but I think that shortly this problem will be mitigated because many factories already started manufacturing of generators, which are necessary for our cell network carriers. You mentioned the renewal of uh, cell networks in Kherson region. Uh, recently there was the occupation of Kharkiv region. Did we make it renew the communication, cell network communication there? In Kharkiv region it's already re renewed for 65%. It was the, the, the case when right upon the liberation of the territory, state security service entered the territory and the, uh, on, on the very next day there were cell carriers in line 
for renewal of, of for reconstruction of the base stations and the same situation was in Balaklia and the same type of works are now in progress in the south so the occupiers learned their lessons they did not uh, destroy the fiberglass networks in uh, in Kharkiv region, but they, they did it in Kherson, they, they just blew up the networks, the best stations, everything. They were destroying the station of the cell carriers. Dear colleagues, your questions? Yeah, uh, Chris Hampson, National Security Media. Do you guys have an ability to uh, tell us if you're seeing, uh, is Russia using a wider range of GRU units um, to launch attacks? And are they using essentially um, like what I would call hired transcripts from the uh, hacker world that are not in the military. Um, do you have a, a, an estimation on the forces you're up against uh, out of Russia? Uh, we all have to understand and take into account that all the hackers that work with the Russian Federation, they don't even try to conceal their identities. They don't use a lot of proxy servers or some relevant equipment. They are being financed by, they are being funded by the government, the Central Intelligence Department, uh, FSB, Armed Forces of Ukraine. So th they are either on the military service or the, they are being funded by such military structures. Even the pr funds of the private sector re received by different corruption based ways are uh, uh, assisted by the government. So they're all war criminals and they use their skills against Ukraine during the war. They're in war with Ukraine. So they are the hackers under the control of the Russian government in any case in all minutes of this uh, word. We have more questions in the studio. Uh, Steve Kleiman, Pacific Rex. Um, I'm wondering if you could comment on offensive capabilities and if that trees up in the same command structure that you, uh, that's under your authority. And secondly, you commented on the Ministry of Digital Transformation and your work in coordination with that group. I'm wondering, is that specifically with IT Army and their offensive capabilities? Or are there other aspects to that relationship? As the uh, government agency responsible for uh, uh, cybersecurity, we cooperate in the area of cybersecurity, most of all. But since we are a joint team, we cooperate in a number of different areas. If uh, your question is about the attacking potential of offensive potential of Ukraine, is being full performed by the U Ukrainian specialists who care who uh, do everything they can to destroy the enemy, but this work is not coordinated by the government. Uh, coordination with Ministry of Digital Transformation, Fedorov. Yes, we do cooperate with the Ministry of Digital Transformation on a daily basis and with the Vice Prime Minister, we are the one team but what, what exactly, which part of your cooperation you are interested in? For what I understand, our foreign colleague is curious about the cooperation in terms of our online platforms. How, how secure are, are the platforms? How secure are the databases? Army has designated specific targets, and I'm wondering if, if your your group helps coordinate what targets are designated for offensive capabilities for offensive operations uh, i wouldn't say that the minister of digital transformation identifies certain targets but yes we have to recognize that there are criti some critical spots in Russia that we know uh, about from the open sources 
from where the, the IT army of Ukraine identifies their targets. Uh, Yana Koloda, Ukraine Forum. My question is as follows. How many cyber attacks were documented since the beginning of the full-scale invasion? If you have this number, it was... Uh, yes, yes. Starting from the 24th of February, the figure is 2,000... 1,665 cyber attacks from 24th of February and it's like five times more than within their respective period of 2021. And another question is how many base stations of the cell carriers are now equipped with the generators? Well, we can count it. It's around 5,000 base stations of the cell carriers are equipped with the different types of... with the which are based on alternative power sources. We don't take into account uh, lead batteries, which were holding the charge for two to three hours. I'm talking about the lithium ion, which uh, hold the charge for 12 hours, for example, and the generators acquired by the operators that there are, there are also many generators uh, which are being provided by different businesses where the base stations at, at whose facilities the base stations are located. Yes, uh, do, do we have any percentage? W what percentage of the base stations is equipped with the generators? We have 37 base stations, including 5,000, which are equipped with the generators. Another question, uh, excuse me, which countries does the service cooperate with to improve the cybersecurity of Ukraine. They are the very same countries that help us, uh, with, that th support us with weapons, with uh, humanitarian aid. It's United States, Great Britain, Sweden, R Romania, Poland, Japan. I'm afraid to forget somebody in order not to offend them, but all the European countries which support us and even th throughout the world who support us with weapons, they help us in the uh, with, with the cyber security uh, as well. Uh, we have more questions. Irina Tech Ukraine, you mentioned Amazon, Microsoft said the companies which support us from the very beginning of the invasion. Can you name more private businesses, companies, corporations, and uh, stakeholders alike which keep supporting us until this very day thank you i don't want to offend a a anybody by, uh, by forgetting them but they are cisco mandy and Faria, all the biggest uh, world corporations no big corporation is standing aside now. If we ask for support, there was no single company which would say that, no, we, we wouldn't do it. So we, we, we can pick top 100 IT companies and you will not be mistaken if you say that they support Ukraine. Both, both with software and their skills and the processing of vulnerabilities because there is a huge number of cyber attacks there there is a big uh, a huge massive of information of cyber attacks and they provide their processing capacities and the experts who help us react in a prompt manner we have more questions uh what can ukrainian citizens do besides staying updated on patches etc on their gadgets to uh, assist um, the country as a whole on cyber attack and cyber defense? This is probably to comply with the basic rules of the cyber hygiene that we keep uh, promulgating of our internet resources to to set up uh, complicated passwords for example so the most elementary things will help you get your pass uh, gadget secure don't open suspicious emails from unknown email addresses if you don't understand what the content of such email may be about keep your software 
updated if we're talking about the telephone fraud don't pass on your personal data to anybody and the, your, for, for example your bank cards details because this trend is gaining more popularity now uh, you mentioned a number of u.s companies and i'm wondering is there a u.s government office helping you coordinate amongst those companies or do you have separate relationships with each company directly It's both direct coordination, direct cooperation. Well, if we talk about the biggest American IT companies, we are being supported in this regard by the Ukrainian Ministry of Digital Transformation, which is the stakeholder of our IT sphere. If we're talking about the processing of cyber attacks or processing of the data related to those cyber attacks, we coordinate uh, our work with the agency CISA, which is uh, responsible for the cybersecurity in the United States, and they're being co and they coordinate their work with the companies. So it's a synergy of direct contacts and uh, work with the government sector. So we cooperate on the same level with everybody because that experience that we're gaining now in Ukraine, it's been required by all the world because no country of the world suffers such number of cyber attacks as uh, and the diversity of types of cyber attacks because uh, well obviously us is in the first place in terms of number of cyber attacks but russians they test their cyber weapons here in ukraine on different levels uh, mr yuri i can't uh, i cannot help but asking about our uh, occupied territories, people end up in information vacuum there specifically because the occupiers stop the operation of our cellular networks. So talk, that said, do we have access to the occupied territories and can we provide our people with uh, cell network communication there? Well, if you've seen uh, if you've seen it on TV or maybe you've seen something uh, online when the Ukrainian citizens on the occupied territories, they watch Ukrainian TV and that's thanks to the work of the Ukrainian specialists who work here in Ukraine. So the first thing the occupiers do is they try to restrict you, the access of Ukrainians to the cellular networks to internet they did it when they tried to capture kiev region chernikov region sumer regions the first thing they were doing is they switched off communications so people don't get the information about what's going on in ukraine how the government tries to protect how the armed forces try to defend the ukrainians they try to influence the brains of ukrainians but they don't make it they don't really fully understand the ukrainians and th as a result it's a prompt liberation of our territories. Dear friends, any more questions? Sofia Chala, TV channel Rada. I wanted to ask if our so-called, if so-called allies of Russia complement to these cyber attacks committed by Russia. Well, you're probably talking about Belarus. About 90% of the cyber attacks committed against Ukrainian infrastructure in one way or another are related to Russians. I wouldn't divide Russians and Belarusians because politically they're the same and in the cyber in the sphere of cyber warfare they're the same. So 60% well, not all the cyber attacks are politically motivated, maybe 90% of them are, and uh, maybe some of them are for some economic profit, and they may be happening from any point, any spot in the world, they may be using the servers of other countries, so there are investigations going on, and because everything about everything which is associated with the russians and the rest is a commercial story we have more questions in the studio sorry that actually brings up a good question what about outside of that sphere what about outside of belarus for instance uh, uh india or africa south america do you do you see anything that's worth noting that's um outside of the obvious sphere where attacks are coming from against the country I wouldn't, I wouldn't 
tie their geography to the use of the IP addresses because the IP addresses may be uh, the IP addresses of any country may be bought online. So practically all the countries that you can see on the map that have their separate pool of uh, IP addresses, they may be used by the per perpetrators, but it does not necessarily mean that the this is the official policy of their countries. We cooperate with relevant bodies, including a state security service, which works on uh, termination of their activity on blocking those IP addresses in those countries their cyber attacks are incoming from. And uh, another question which correlates with uh, previous questions, don't you see the growth of the uh, threats and the attacks from uh, North Korea, Iran, and those organizations? And you mentioned that we, we can correlate Belarus and Russia, that they are the same, but at the same time, we, knew, we know about the Belarusian guerrillas who take the Ukrainian side, who are being inspired by and supported by Ukrainian side. Well, I, I'm talking about the inadequate part of Belarus. Obviously, there are people who help Ukraine, who help Ukrainian intelligence, and uh, in, including their positions. I'm talking about the political situations. I'm talking about those who work with the government. As to the other countries, the number of cyber attacks documented from those countries you mentioned is stable. There are hacker groups there, hacker teams there. They cooperate, they are uh, in coordination, but I would not call it a growth or some permanent phenomena, because for today we understand that Russians invest in their hackers and they coordinate their hackers that they grew by themselves, that uh, those hackers that were able to postpone the conference 15 minutes. Uh, any number of reports on the security of Telegram and the vulnerabilities of uh, the Telegram messaging platform. And so many Ukrainians use this platform. The military uh, and, uh, and people that are thinking about security tend to use Signal instead. I'm wondering if you view uh, the, 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 the broad use of Telegram among Ukrainian civilians as a significant vector of attack for uh, uh, the, the Russians to gather information. Uh. Well, in no case, I, I, we don't spread any information about any messenger, about any platforms. So we, my recommendation is to use the messenger with the open source code. So when the, any IT specialist can check the ways of access to your phone, and this type of messenger is the signal you mentioned or Briar, for example, and other messengers. I'm sure that you use Telegram as well, but it does not necessarily mean that you don't trust it. There are certain issues that can be easily solved using Telegram. For example, you can check the news, but for private communication, for discussion of some confidential things, my advice is to use the open source code messengers. Mr. Yuri, last question to you on the 24th of February. It will be the one year of the full-scale invasion of the occupiers to our countries. Do you forecast the growth of number of cyber attacks in view of the fact that the occupiers, they like these days, the anniversaries? Well, I would say that notwithstanding the dates, the number of cyber attacks will only grow all around the world and the threat will grow and the harm posed by those cyber attacks will grow. We, we live in the future, in fact, already two years ago, we would not be have been able to imagine that there will be missile strikes on the critical infrastructure of Ukraine and it will be coordinated with the cyber attacks and those cyber attacks could do so much harm to critical infrastructure, logistics, power grid, and uh, that, that all those sectors would be potentially vulnerable. So to prevent it, we need to cooperate with our international partners, political or private, we have to create the platforms for exchanging this type of information and to create uh, the mechanisms which can protect the whole world. And yes, the number of cyber attacks will grow next month and further on just until the very moment 
we destroy the Russian Federation. Mr. Yuri, thank you very much for helping us to get to our broadcast and no matter all the attacks of the Russians. I'm reminded you joining us was Yuri Shigal, this head of state service for special communications and information security. Dear friends, bear with us, trust in our armed forces and work together for the victory. Glory to Ukraine.